Hey everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And today, we're going to talk about planting seeds. So, let's move out to the greenhouse and we'll talk in person about some stuff. Everybody, Irene with Brainstorm Makers. We're now in the greenhouse, and this is part two of planting seeds. So you're going to see some odd sort of arrangement right here now. This is our seeding badge, and we made it ourselves, and it has a cover area here. This can allow us this. This is actually an electrical conduit, and it allows us to put a plastic cover on here at night. So right now, because it's quite cold at night, this is my tomato cloning experiment. These are all cuttings from the tomatoes that we had in the hydroponic system here, and we are waiting to see if we can get these to overwinter. And we've got some really nice root structure on some of these guys. And it's actually time for me to dump these out and redo this whole thing. But what I have here is I have a heat mat, which is set to 70. I have a container, a tray of water. And it's got about inch and a half, two inches of water in it. And that gives me a reservoir of heat so that even if the power goes off, I still have 70 degree water there then the cuttings themselves are also in 70 degree water. And then this gets covered with a, a dome at the end of the day. During the day, if it's above freezing, this is left open so that it can get air because it's in a greenhouse, so it's not 32 degrees in here. And if it is 32 degrees in here, then everything is pretty well buttoned up. So let me show you the weird stuff I've got going on over here. Some of these things here are actually used to help hold down the plastic at night, so that's why it looks messy. This is a seed bed. So is this one. The reason this one has things sitting on it is because when the seed mats have been stored, they are usually stored rolled up. And as you know, if you've ever worked with things that are stored rolled up that are plastic, they become rigid in that position. So yesterday afternoon, actually, I spread this out and I put some heavy things on it and left it because I knew it would flatten out and that's what I wanted. Now, I have a bottom tray just like this one that I'm going to use here under my seedlings. And I hate that squeak. Ah, that's terrible. Um, I need to talk to you about bottom trays. This is all these seed starting supplies that we have here right now are old and they have served their time. And to be honest, some of them are dying. Now, one of the oldest ones I have is actually from a Jiffy Pot uh, seed starting set that we bought at a big box store mumble mumble years ago. And I do mean it's a lot of mumbles. So let me show you what happened with that one. Yeah, this is the Jiffy. It says actually says Jiffy here. And we found that over the years, there's different ways that these trays die. In this case, it's got a little teeny hole right there. It looks like something bumped into it hard. And if you get the light behind it, you can see it. And that's how I discovered it. What, I, what I've learned to do with these things is a tray, you look at a tray, you'll brush it out with a brush and it'll look great. And that's what I had started to do with this is I'd started to brush it out. And then the light just happened to catch right. And I could see if I put a piece of white behind there, that little bit of white, right there is actually a hole. So if I went to use this, 
it would leak water all over the place. Now, you're like, well, what's the big deal? Well, first of all, you're not supposed to immerse your seed mats in water. They are water resistant. I always take the best care of them that I possibly can, but I don't want to purposefully put a tray on top of them that leaks. So I went, okay, well, you're toast. And then when I realized it was an old Jiffy one, I'm like, oh Lord, I've had that thing for probably 15 years. I can't complain. They're actually pretty flimsy. This is what usually happens with them. They crack. Uh, and you'll see they're cracked on the corners. This other one did the other usual thing. This one is one of my Johnny's Select Seeds trays. It is also quite elderly, but it has reached its end of life. And in this case, what it has done is it's cracked right along here. If I stick my finger behind it, you may be able to see the line where my finger is behind it. If I push open. Uh, I try to check my trays because, again, what I did is I know that these trays break and I know that these are older trays. So what I actually do is I set them on something and I brush them sitting on something so they're supported. These are considered to be disposables in the growing industry and uh, they eventually wear out. But nonetheless, it's still annoying when they wear out at the wrong moment. And what I'm trying to do is check to make sure a tray that I use is not going to have a leak in it to start with. You know, sometimes when you're sliding a tray, like if I were to try and slide this guy right now, I might break him. I mean, to be honest, he's older and I, so I'm trying not to slide him while he's full of water because I don't want to break it. But you need to be aware of that if you're using old trays, they will sometimes develop a leak. Sometimes even though you've checked them over carefully and maybe held them up to the light and everything else, you'll still find a leak later. It's usually not the end of the world. It's just annoying. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. So what I have here is I have another old Johnny's tray. And this one I held up to the light. I checked the corners. Because what happens on some of these is sometimes they'll crack on the corners and they'll crack up high, which means when you're only putting a half an inch of water in here, it won't leak. But then if you get up to a three quarters of an inch of water, all of a sudden you've got water coming all over the place and you're wondering where it's coming from. So I checked this guy over pretty well. I don't see any cracks in the holes in him anywhere. So we're going to use him. So I'm putting him on my heat mat. Now, do you have to have a heat mat? Well, no, you don't. Uh, I had no heat mats for years and I raised a gazillion seedlings in my house. What I like about having this heat mat is I don't need to have him in my house. Our goal this year is to see if we can start everything out here and not ever have to run things into the house. Is that a viable goal? I don't know. Will we succeed? I don't know. It's possible that we'll be able to make it work all the way through the season. Usually what happens is somewhere in late April, early May, we're dealing with larger seedlings, which have got this place pretty crammed. And all of a sudden it's going to be 10 degrees. I can't keep this greenhouse, at least at this point in my existence, warm enough when it's gonna be 10 degrees outside. So at that point, we wind up evacuating the greenhouse into the <laughs> dining room. And sometimes the kitchen too, because it's not enough room in the dining room. But we're really hoping to avoid that drama this year. Really hoping. Now, what I have here is I have my tray. I have my little pots. Now, these are cool. These were a gift from uh, a friend of ours in Great Britain, Digwell. Steve, we're still using them. We haven't even begun to make a big dent in them. And why I like these is when I don't want to do A whole batch like this, there's 50 cells in this. These are slightly larger cells, so there's fewer. <laughs> and, and it gives me more room for roots. And I can just decide I want four of this kind of seed, and I want four of this kind of seed, and I want four of this kind of seed, and I want four of this kind of seed. They fit into a standard 1020 bottom tray, which is what this is here. 
and now I have room for four more sets of starts when I'm ready. Or I could put a different seed in each one of these as long as I label them carefully. But I've decided that right now what I want is to just do a few starts, not a million, just a few. So I'm going to take my seed, I'm going to read the instructions, and then I'm going to plant them. Then, once I've got these guys planted in here, I'm going to put a cover on them. I'm going to water them and then put a cover on them. This is seed starting mix. Black gold, sun grow, uh, seedling mix. We got this from Hoss Tools. What I usually do is I will get, Hoss Tools has a deal where if you spend a certain amount of money, you get free shipping. And that's easy to do, <laughs> the spending the money part. So if I'm kind of close, I'll throw in something like this and I get free shipping. And then I always keep a stock of this on hand. I don't want to run out during growing season. So I try to always have, I right now I think I have one unopened bag and one tiny bit bag. I might have one more. I try and keep two or three bags on hand at any time because I often cannot get seed starting mix at the big box stores. Starting seedlings, starting seeds, taking seeds and turning them into seedlings. Read your package. A uh, quarter inch to half inch deep. These are slightly old seeds. The last time I planted them, I had excellent germination. I'm going to stick two seeds in each one of these little guys. These are not a particularly fragile seed. It is Atlantis broccoli, which is a mini broccoli. Now, what is a mini broccoli? A normal broccoli plant will produce a center stalk and sometimes a little bit of side stalks, but not much. And that center stalk will be very big, and then the side ones will be usually fairly small. Obviously, there's a lot of variation between varieties, but that's the general rule of thumb. Now, mini broccoli produces a smaller center thing, but then it produces wave after wave of side shoots. I was telling you about the mini broccoli. They produce a smaller center shoot, but then they produce a lot of side shoots. And we really like that. Uh, we found that it worked really well for us as a you know, two-person family to not have giant quantities of this stuff. What I'm doing right now is looking for my labels. Label, label. And remember, we're using labels that do not instantly just self-destruct <laughs> when they get uh, sunlight on them. I am using a special garden marker, both Haas tools and, oh, there's a whole bunch of them now that uh, have them. Uh, Johnny's has them, uh, Haas has them. I have seen them in the big box stores sold, so, sold with small packs of labels. So yeah, you don't want to be wondering what was. Now each of these, because I'm doing the same vegetable seeds in each one of these packs, I don't have to guess uh, or put like four, <laughs> you know, four things in here. This is Emerald Crown Broccoli, another very nice broccoli uh, from Haas Tools. We've grown these multiple times and we love them. They are not a mini broccoli, but we've still had very good luck with them. And they do produce... Pro produce a pretty significant quantity of side shoots in addition to that bigger center piece. I'm just putting two seeds in each cell on the diagonal following the basic rule of about a quarter inch deep. And then I'll cut
cover them up well. Then this guy is Tiara Cabbage. This is a Johnny Select Seed. I haven't seen them for sale from anybody else. Um, I don't know if anybody else sells them, I'll be honest. These are again, these are half seed, half inch deep. Seeds every 12 inches, blah, blah, blah. Um, how old are these? These are older. Generally speaking, brassica seeds, if they're stored correctly, will continue to be good for a considerable amount of time. Having them be an extra year old or an extra couple of years old. You know, I might have slightly fewer coming up. If all of these come up, I will have eight plants. That's really more than I need, but I'm trying to make sure. If I have all eight come up, I'll figure a place to put them. That's the best way to put it. But I don't want 20 plants, because then I would be like really going, uh-oh. The last little guy here, this is my King Choi. That is a type of hybrid pak choy, also a Johnny seed. Um, pak choys come in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and we tried. We like pak choy, but have a very hard time getting it in the grocery store. They carry ones where it's mostly stem, ones where it's mostly leaves, some that are designed to be baby, some that are designed to be multifaceted. This can be used for um, either regular sized ones or baby. And it came touted as being slow to bolt. Now, slow to bolt's a big, a big deal no matter what, but um, one of the things I found out by doing some reading is that a lot of pak choy are very sensitive to temperatures right after they are transplanted. My concern was I have a limited ability to control temperatures. You know, I mean, I try, uh, but they wanted, a bunch of the stuff was saying, well, you have to keep it between, I don't know, like I'm making up the numbers, but the numbers are close, like 60 and 65 degrees. And I'm like, I don't have that level of control for my seeds. So I decided this variety would be the choice. Now, this little guy, let's see if he'll work today. I haven't cleaned him recently. This is a cheapy spray er that I got on sale at Harbor Freight. I get nothing from Harbor Freight. <laughs> but I love them for starting seedlings because I can spray the tops of my cells without disturbing the seeds. Now, everybody that I've showed this to has, who has tried it loves it. Once your seeds are up and stuff like that, you can use watering cans and other other stuff like that. But if you have tiny seeds especially, they're very likely to get washed away unless you're very careful. The um, commercial growers that I have seen who are using, uh, doing tiny seeds like this, uh, they have very fine spray nozzles suspended on the roofs of their uh, from their overhead waters and so they get this very fine spray nozzle effect that they use for uh, spraying the tops of their water and I know that they probably switch up how they do things later on but in the, at least initially to start things they're being very careful about how they're spraying you need to have a very fine mist we do not have pressurized water in our greenhouse. We do not have, we have electricity, but we do not have running water in here. We have barrels, which uh, I can take water out of to put into watering cans and sprayers and things like that. And now that I'm starting to do this again, I will be probably, I'll probably dismantle this guy and clean him. What happens is the nozzle on these things in here will get gunk in it. And sometimes it's just mineral deposits. <laughs> and you just need to wipe it off. Um, and, and it'll work fine again. But that's all I have to do. Now, 
because this soil is not bone dry, but it is a little drier than I prefer it to be because it just came out of the bag. I'm also going to put some bottom water in here. So I'm just going to put, I'm going to fill the bottom of the uh, tray with probably a half an inch of water. And see, that's why I wanted to make sure that the tray didn't leak anywhere. <laughs> now, I'm going to also turn on the heat mat. And I'm going to need to make another holder thingy here. Um, these heat mats have a temperature probe right there. And they'll tell you all kinds of strange things. They'll say, stick it in the dirt and use your suction cup. That's suction cup. I don't know, maybe it sticks to your forehead, but it sure as heck doesn't stick to anything else. But what I do is I stick this in the, underneath between the heat mat and the um, tray, and I try and center it. And the reason I try and center it is because it's going to read the temperature that it is right there. If I put it over here and the sun's shining on it in the morning, it's going to get a false temperature. If I put it over here and the sun's shining on it in the afternoon, it's going to get a false temperature. So having it in the middle gives it the best, most reliable temperature. And then, going to sort my wires out <laughs> right there. Okay, it is set for 22. Perfect. <laughs> Close enough. And uh, I'm going to find a little twist tie and hang it up here, same as this guy is. I'll be able to keep track of those and see at a glance exactly what the temperature it is. And as I said, now that this has been watered, I will put a lid on this. These are old lids. <laughs> they have no, they're no longer completely transparent. And they're very crunchy, but it's good enough. And that's all there is to it. Back before I had this kind of a setup, and these setups are fairly easily read, available. Uh, in fact, spoiler alert, Santa brought us something very cool and we're going to be sharing that in the next couple of days. Haas Tools has a very nice seed starting setup. Yeah, and we got one from Santa this year. So I'm just using some of my old stuff now because I don't want people to feel like they have to run out and buy new things. I have grown many wonderful things using saved pots from Bonnie Plants and solo cups that I poked holes in the bottom of. <laughs> in fact, when I pot up, if I don't have, if I need to pot up in between times before I can put the stuff outside, a lot of times they wind up in something like this uh, before they go outside because I need, they need more room for their roots. I don't want them getting root bound because it'll stunt their growth, but I don't want to be spending a billion dollars on pots. So I have an old, package, I don't know, it was like 200 cups that was left over from a party we were responsible for providing cups four years ago. I poked holes in the bottom with a ice pick. <laughs> and uh, the rest is history. We have a zillion little pots. So you don't have to do anything fancy. You don't have to do anything expensive. It is nice if you have something like this because having this lid on, and most of them are short. They're about that big. Uh, I just happen to have this one here. It's uh, just a very nice thing to have it there to retain the moisture when you're trying to start seeds. It's really not brain surgery. You need seeds. You need something to plant into. And that can be compost that you sieve down so that it's not lumpy. It can be potting soil that you sieve down so it's not lumpy. You want to avoid the lumps because that will impact your seeds ability to grow. You need something to hold it in. Uh, for people who are doing hydroponics, you often use oasis or rock wool. That's a whole nother can of worms. Uh, something to protect it if you're trying to keep the moisture in is a nice thing. It's not mandatory. I grew for decades without any kind of domes. But I tell you what, in a dry climate, this makes all the difference in the world. 
it is nice to have a heat mat. It is definitely not necessary, especially if you're only growing a few things and you're growing them in the house. You know, the heat mats here are a good way for us to heat a very small area. <laughs> it'll heat the, the water in the bottom of that container and it'll help to keep the plants warm. Real benefit in the greenhouse environment. You want heat mats that are adjustable. We got ours from Amazon. We did not spend a fortune. Haas Tools has a whole stack of them. I honestly haven't investigated them very much. I have thought about getting the big commercial size ones because we have the big commercial size seed trays from Haas. And we might do that eventually, uh, especially when it gets to be that time of year. We'll have to see. It depends on what the budget allows. <laughs> but because uh, it's always a balancing act. What, no matter what you're doing, there's always a balancing act. And you have to decide what's worth it to you. Uh, our original Jiffy Pot sort of starter kit that we bought, <sighs> probably 20 bucks at a big box store. I think they were more last year. I think if you could get them, they were 30 but that's still not a bad way to start if you're trying to get something small. Now, if you want something that's going to last forever, I suggest getting the Haas Tool stuff because that's all commercial grade. It's not the flimsy stuff like this that will crack and break in just a couple of years. But, you know, you may not need this kind of stuff. I mean, I've done all kinds of crazy stuff with plant cake covers and everything else to, to keep things warm under the right circumstances. You can, you can make it work. Uh, so don't be intimidated by it. Don't be afraid to try it. If you have questions, please ask. We've been growing for a long time. Uh, you know, you have to even decide if you want to grow seeds from scratch. For some people, it just doesn't make sense. It just makes more sense to, to buy a plant. But if you're starting with seedlings, I mean with seeds, something like this is a great way to start. So be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because obviously we're going to be ton doing tons more. I still have to redo my, my uh, nursery. In case you wonder what I'm doing, I'm taking off a flower bud because I do not want it trying to flower. These guys have been trying to flower like crazy. I keep telling them, no, you can't do that. Tons more going on. Tons more planning. We still haven't gotten... We're starting to share some of our varieties. Uh, we'll be talking about why in some cases. Why, when I'm seeding like today I talked about you know the uh, pak choy why I've chosen that particular variety we try and think out what we do we rarely do things casually and we try and pass on the news to everybody else so that they too have the choice to not do things casually <laughs> so until next time bye and be sure to keep brainstorming need to do that got to figure things out <laughs>